Hi everybody, I wanted to show you how my grade crossing works. Uh, I built it myself, I built the gates myself, as well as the train detection and activation system. Uh, first, I want to talk about how the train detection works. And it relies on these ultrasonic sensors that I've mounted to various buildings across the layout. There's four of them across the layout, uh, and each one performs a different function. The outer two help determine which direction the train is coming from, and the ones in the middle determine when the crossing should deactivate and ascend the gates. So we're going to go to the first one on the counterclockwise loop where I have a train sitting there and I'll show you how it becomes activated. So you'll notice there's another sensor uh, sitting right in front of the engine. And whenever I put the engine past the sensor, you'll hear the bell go off, meaning that the crossing is activated, which it does. And it works in two directions, so if there's another outbound uh, sensor on the opposite side of the loop, so if the train's going the other direction, uh, the crossing won't activate when the train's directly on top of it. So I'm going to walk back over to the crossing and show you how the uh, crossing deactivates. Now the first sensor has, also has a primary role of raising that semaphore too. So whenever it activates, it raises. Whenever it passes the cinema here, it drops. So we begin our second stage of the event, which is waiting for the caboose to pass this bank. So our caboose is coming up, and as soon as the caboose is in the middle of this curve, the gates are going to go back up, and you'll notice the bell doesn't ring because the bell only rings as it descends. And lastly, we have the same concept here where the signal will turn off whenever the last car passes the shanty, which it, which it did. So that completed our crossing event. Now another feature to this is the gate will time out if the train doesn't pass the trigger behind the cinema. So whenever I stop the train and restart it, the gate will go back down. Just like that. So let's go underneath the layout and see how the mechanism works uh, to control these gates. So we're underneath the layout. Each gate is controlled by a, a servo. There are two of them. And it pulls a lever arm that is fixed to the gate, which pulls it up or down. So right now it's going down. So we push, we push that wire up, which uh, through a pulley system makes that gate go down. Uh, the gate and the lights, or this motor and the lights, are controlled with our, an Arduino. It sits over here. And it takes an input in the form of this relay, which handles all the uh, track de activation information. That's controlled by another Arduino in the back of the layout. Uh, there's really not much to look at for that, but... And this relay was actually from the Pennsylvania Rail Railroad. There's actually four of them back here that uh, are actually authentic and used for a similar purpose uh, in, in uh, railroad signaling. This particular one is, I think, from 1945. And uh, basically controlled the signaling for crossing signals, you name it. Uh, these things were used for that purpose. So basically what happens with our train activation is we send an electrical pulse to pick up this relay. Uh, 
which completes the circuit to our railroad crossing microprocessor, which tells the bell, it picks up the relay for this, which makes the bell go off, and it picks up this relay to tell the MTH crossing to flash. Uh, if the train went the other direction, we pick up this relay to control the semaphore. And stuff like that. So, our train's nearing the detection point, so I'll show you how the bell rings. I did put a piece of tape over it to help mute it, so it's not as deafening, but it still is pretty loud. So once the gate gates are uh, fully descending, descended, uh, you'll notice the relay drops here. That turns the bell off. This relay is still picked up because the lights are still flashing. And while I was talking, the motors did their thing to pull the gates down. Uh, whenever the train exits the circuit, I'll. I'll show you uh, how the relay's picked up and whatnot, but let me pause it. So our train's about to exit the circuit. Our track to activation uh, system is going to drop this relay. The gates are going up. Lights are still flashing. Uh, and once the gates are up, you saw how that relay dropped. That turns the lights off, and they are no longer flashing. That's basically how it works. Uh, I'll give a run by and head out and show you what it looks like from the outside. So it's going to hit the sensor. Semaphore went up. Bell's ringing. After three flashes, the gates descend. Bell turns off. And our lovely MTH Norfolk and Western J class is on its way. Same system is going to drop the intermediate signal back there. Which it did. Another thing to note, I did rewire the MTH signals. Uh, for some reason, you can't set the signal to clear it goes to approach first. I didn't like that that's not prototypical which approach which uh, with a uh, approach lit signaling which is sort of what I want to replicate. So basically bypass their circuit board to do what I wanted it to do and I'm kind of happy with it. So if you're not familiar with approach to lit signaling, uh, it was a concept that was designed to save electricity. So the signal is only on when it's in the block. So when it's not in the block, uh, all of the lights are turned out because you, uh, you don't need to read a signal for a train that's not there. But it's really all there is to it. Thanks for watching.